Hello everyone and welcome to the Student Art Podcast. I'm your host Ross Baxter and today is episode number 44 of the series and today I'm going to do a whole sort of different take on the podcast. Obviously over the over the last nine months I've been um, obviously talking to a lot of different guests and so forth and um, being able to bring on their perspective and talk about their journey overall and um, the main reason for me doing the podcast was obviously to pretty much find answers that I felt needed to be answered with when it came to the student education system but most importantly um, make sure that I could help you guys out as much as possible in terms of encouraging you making you feel more motivated and this all started because of obviously the pursuit of my own dream and uh, my own pursuit as an artist and I'm super happy to say I've uh, finally my dream has become uh, just become fulfilled I've just got my dream job um, it's taken me nine years. It's a nine-year journey from um, the start of my my whole sort of pursuit of art as a passion, and um, this is why I wanted to kind of also record my video, uh, like my video today, like see my face and so forth, um, just to kind of highlight like the whole story in a bit more depth. And as as artists, particularly, we, I don't know, it's it's it's, it's very complicated. Um, Everyone has um, different passions. It's, it's the same for any pursuit, or for any career. Um, it, everything's a journey. It's a different story. There's nothing that is one particular path. Like, I can't say to you guys, do this exact thing and it will guarantee you um, the job that you want. But I can always provide with knowledge that I've learned through my experiences and my time as an artist growing up and um, acknowledging my weaknesses, my strengths, and... Um, and what I've learned from many, many artists um, over the years. And um, I've, I've been very, very privileged to be taught by so many great people and um, have the idols around me. And when times have been hard or when things have been a lot more challenging than what um, uh, things are normally are, then I've learned how to, how to tackle them. And my biggest um, strength um, above everything else is my mindset. I've never been... In my in my last nine years, um, obviously I've had uh, very ups and downs, um, like we all do. It's uh, it's normal, and but I've never been one of those people to kind of just dwell in them and be stuck in a loop. I don't get stuck in loops. I don't believe in it. I um or I make sure to um, if I'm if I'm slowly kind of digging myself into a hole, then um I get my chest out. I I step back and I think about um things in a positive manner. Even if things are challenging, I understand things are not the easiest. We um, constantly, as humans, or just people in general, uh, put pressures on us, on ourselves for no apparent reason. And we don't acknowledge the small things that are actually the bigger things in life, such as your time with family, touch, such as your time with friends. And stop. we have to stop thinking um, all the time about... Um, trying to be the best artist because it's not about you shouldn't have to be thinking about who like, how good you are at art you should purely uh, be enjoying it as cliche as it sounds um, because the more enjoyment you show through just your mentality uh, that then passes naturally and inevitably through into your artwork and acknowledging that, that it's a process it's so important like I said it, right at the start it took me nine years for this journey to um, to finally um get where I wanted to go obviously so I'm 23 I finished university two years ago and um in the last two years I've turned down roughly about 30 jobs and um, because I knew in my mind what I wanted and I understand that a lot of us don't know what we want and it's okay there's no there's no pressure there's no rush it's um it's not it's not a race Um, a lot of people ask me and uh, I've heard this many times not just in art but in a lot of other professions and um, one of the common questions is that um, is age such a contributing factor to your job? And some people may argue that it is, but to me personally, it means nothing. Um, out of all the artists I've talked to, one of the best, uh, um, one of the main, and one of my favourite guests I've had on is Tim Simpson. And hearing his journey and his thoughts on um, the whole sort of concept, because he gets that question asked quite a lot as well. And age doesn't mean anything. It's it's purely down to you highlighting your skill set and making sure that you keep working on your craft and acknowledging that it's that's a journey it's going to be a grind it's always is um for example 
um, when I when I was in my first um, so I started off so I'm from Inverness so I live in uh, um, so I'm from a place called Inverness in Scotland and um, I've pretty much lived everywhere in Scotland to get where I wanted to go um, and to get my dream come true and I've never cared about what people thought about or how difficult it's going to be so most people when they go to when they're choosing a path they're they're like right i'm going to go to this university and they go to that university for four years um or whatever um or that that's that tends to be the cliche or the common sort of path we um um when we come out of secondary school we tend to go into the university you don't have to go to university it's okay it's not a problem at all but i started my path started um so when i was in fifth and sixth years so when i was let me see um so Art kind of started for me, so I'm 23 now, so let's see, I was 14 roughly uh, when I was introduced to 3D, so that's why I say it was a nine year journey, because my whole life's mainly been sport, but my main journey started roughly when I was 14, 15 in secondary school, and I came across 3DS Max and stuff, and it was then that things kind of was like sort of kind of joining the dots like things were coming into fruition and i was beginning to realize what i was enjoying the most and um but my journey was never kind of um one sort of path like it wasn't one sort of uh i went to one place finished it and then got a job and it's the case for a lot of people like it's not that's um if that happens for you then that's great then that's awesome then go with it that's brilliant but i started my journey in aberdeen so i left home um, I had my own place, I had my own, uh, my own flat at 17 and um, uh, I was working two jobs. Um, so I was working for an oil company doing 3D art and I was working for a company called Next in retail. And um, I was barely in my flat. I was, playing, I, was trying, I was trying to pay for a flat for, like I was putting on constant hours, um, no joke. So I was being, say I was working for, what, 50 to 60 hours um, for both those two jobs. And then I would be making sure that I, I, um, I was working all the time uh, so I had my time at college, so I, I started in a HNC in 3D computer animation in Aberdeen. Amazing course, so if you're living in the UK or Scotland, uh, particularly Scotland, obviously it's easier for the jump. Um, I was really blessed to be taught by so many great teachers there. And um, so when I, when I was uh, during my time in uh, Aberdeen, it was, uh, it was my first time uh, properly leaving home and I was only 17 at the time. And there was a lot to learn, but... I enjoyed, I loved the fact that I had my own place. I had, I could do whatever I wanted. I could stay up as late as possible, do art nonstop. And then if I wasn't doing art, I was doing the gym, I was doing sport. And it was all because of everyone's journey, it's different. You learn obviously as you go along and, and that's the great part about life. And that's what makes it worth a uh, while. So obviously I was in Aberdeen and when I was in Aberdeen, um, obviously it was getting surrounded by students so making new friends and making new friends is another great skill to to learn and develop so if you're naturally quite shy that's okay and um, the great thing about when you leave university and you're going to these courses is that you begin to realize that you surround yourself by the people that you want to be surrounded by and that's the most important part because then if, if you're an introvert and um, i'm not an introvert but if you are an introvert and um, which is okay there's nothing wrong with being an introvert um, then it's okay. Um, like, that's a great thing. You're surrounding yourself by people that you want to be surrounded by. So when I when I was in um, in in college in Aberdeen, like Aberdeen was probably like I, I changed my mind quite a lot, but it was the best feeling in a long time for me. Like I was so fun being there. Like one of my other best experiences in my life was taking part of a Disney uh, course called Animation Mentor. But when I was in Aberdeen, I was surrounded by people constantly playing like their Game Boys and their uh, whatever Nintendo DS's thingies. I'm not the greatest at the, those, you know what I mean? But because I, I was always just um, playing football, doing running, basketball, swimming, gym and that. But then being surrounded by all these guys, like I was like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. Like I'm, I'm being surrounded by people that I wanted to be surrounded by or like the other. So there's like two groups I've always been surrounded by in sport and uh, arts and gamers. But when I was back home, there wasn't really anyone who was like, geeking out about film as much as I was or geeking out about games in a, in a certain way um, and being taking that leap and going to to study in in Aberdeen was amazing and 
we we learn different things as we're growing up and since i was 17 at the time so i had to learn how to look after myself and um, as we all do so you have to you have to leave home eventually and when i was um uh i guess trying to learn like the, this the small things such as um good diet learning how to cook like i i love making food i love cooking um and uh making food is amazing you can't go wrong with food but so i was there there's so many different things that i was learning the main thing for me was always um planning and consistency and healthy routine because when i was in um aberdeen i had my first sort of scare as in not like a negative way obviously it's not the um the most appealing thing to happen but basically what happened is i was in a situation where um i might have i was going to have i pretty much had no money and um i was 17 at the time and i was trying to figure out right how do i get the money <laughs> and um that's why i started working more jobs and stuff and uh that then uh gave me a reality check in terms of consistency and developing good habits and being 17 at the time i was really focused on almost being mature so early on um so for example there's one thing i don't do that most people do do and i have nothing against it so i don't drink um so i've never drank alcohol in my life ever believe it or not um that was just a decision i made early on through sport and uh through um like seeing what people like this people are surrounded by like i have nothing against what people like people can do whatever they want but having that out of my life meant that there was one distraction kind of off my list in my perspective and um i also was um because of i was always planning things ahead i was always a kind of a step ahead of my classmates um obviously um i'm not saying that i was the best when i was in aberdeen but um i i don't believe in that sort of thing like i've i believe in keep being positive and um you have to you have to boost yourself you have to have that you have to kind of be like, you know, you know what, I'm good at art. You have to believe in yourself. And I've always had that. And I've always not let it, uh, I've not let anyone um, put me down. Um, even of, uh, even I'm like, say I'm getting constructive criticism, that's okay. You have to acknowledge that constructive criticism is healthy. And obviously we can, people can deliver it in a certain way that is, um, that can affect you. Obviously that makes sense. But for example, um, there's a lot of people who are very bad at giving feedback. I am, maybe it's because they have an ego um, or they think they have some sort of, um, I don't know, food chain sort of system as if they're, they're up here and you're down here. Um, whereas I, I, I don't believe in that um, approach. I've always ble believed in everyone has a say, even if you're not an artist. So I'm um, asking family and friends who have no sort of connection to art for feedback because they acknowledge things and they, they see things that, you've overlooked because of you constantly observing the same thing. So for example, um, I'm currently on Twitch um, or I'm on Twitch all the time now. So um, I'm working on a Game of Thrones piece. So if you want to check that out, by the way, so that's www.twitch uh, forward slash Ross Baxter Art. So the link will be in the description below. We're on our journey to 100 followers. Um, so thank you so much for everyone who's followed. And oh, I, I, by the way, I am singing on that. So if you like singing, um, I've been singing some amazing high school musical over there. Um, just for a good laugh but and um, so through there you have and um, pardon me on that you have the chance to ask me any questions you want from 3d to 2d to how do i sculpt so i'm doing the game of thrones series at the moment and highlight my whole process from start to finish and um, based off brand the broken and i'm making a sculpt for that but bringing it back into the main um the main topic so obviously um the main topic right now is uh the learning curve and experience so um, when I was in Aberdeen, there, um, so obviously when you make that first step to, um, I guess, that next step is growing as an adult and becoming an adult. There's a lot of things, uh, like I said earlier, that are important. So consistency and good good routine. So a lot of students have this um, uh, sort of night owl sort of myth or made up approach as in, oh, I'm a night owl. I don't, I don't think there's such a thing. I think it's a choice. Um, a lot of people say they're a morning person or a night person. I don't think there's such a thing. It's uh, it's down to um, how your body is filled with um, like good good nutrition, um, uh, good, uh, good use of your body as in um, doing exercise. And that's what that naturally develops your mindset and it makes your mindset either uh, uh, boost in like self-esteem or go down. 
And that's another thing. So I was um, I was watching a program um, the other day with my dad, and um, uh, it kind of reminded me of what I was talking to with one of my friends because um, well, a few of my friends they're uh, uh, personal trainers, and they were talking about the foods that make a difference to your life and the food that um, can make you feel um, temporarily better and so forth. And obviously, like a lot of us like um, that dopamine rush. So the biggest um, the biggest addiction that everyone tends to have, particularly artists, um, I, I'm a culprit of myself, I'll admit it, is that, for example, social media, like you, people check, um, like for example, <laughs> I've been checking my subs- uh, how many subscribers I have uh, quite a lot lately because I'm I, for, just because I'm trying to get 2,000 subscribers so I'm four subscribers away from reaching my goal and that sort of dopamine rush when you see the, the number going up or whatever that naturally makes you feel a wee bit better that's why um, social media is such an addiction for so many people because when they get a message from someone they feel better and they, they sit up or they feel they just feel more encouraged they feel alive but that's temporarily and that's why all these things um, have to come into the whole idea of planning. So planning at the end of the day is everything. If you can go to university and get a balance between social life and planning, you're sorted for the rest of your life because um, through that time, so four years and naturally this is the time that you work with. So in terms of a course, on average, it's roughly four years. So in those four years, if you can focus on using that as your development to be ready for an actual job, then you're fine. Um, this is where a lot of people lose sight um, of the purpose of university. A lot of people go to university to obviously have fun and stuff. And that's great. Like this, That's amazing. So I had the chance to obviously hang around with tons of friends and make lots of friends over all the places and cities that I went to. And that's important. Like Friendships are crucial. However, you should be going to university to make the most of that opportunity because remember, um, particularly in like bigger countries and stuff, uh, you're going to be coming out of a lot of debt and you have to realise that that debt you're going to have to pay back. Obviously, um, it's broken down or separated between a certain amount of time and you pay off n- monthly or whatever. But you have to realise that that four years is a chance for you to be like, you know what, I'm going to really make the most of this chance. And believe it or not, Everyone in my first first year um, of college in Aberdeen, um, I'm the only one who continued 3D or pursued it as a passion. And uh, like a few of my best friends came from that course and they were really talented, but they, they gave up on themselves. They lost sight because they maybe got, got themselves stuck in a hole or they um, lost passion because of maybe um, not uh, believing in themselves or uh, not surrounding themselves by the good people or keeping consistent. And I always knew what I wanted. So when I so the next part of the journey, so I was in Aberdeen, and after Aberdeen, I then moved to Edinburgh for my H and D. So I started off with H and C in Aberdeen, then went to H and D in Edinburgh, and uh, the next part of the journey. Oh my gosh, it was so good! It was so fun. Um, Edinburgh, I, I, I loved Edinburgh. I, I really did. Um, amazing lecture. And um, so I, had, I was taught by. Um, so I've I've been blessed by lectures. So. I've been taught by so many great lecturers. So when I was in uh, Edinburgh, I got taught by a, a lecturer called Ian MacArthur. I actually did a podcast with him, really great guy, and uh, taught me so much, and I'm really grateful for what he did for everyone and the class. And when I was in Edinburgh, um, obviously, next step. So but this time this time I was in shooting hall, so this time I didn't have my own flat. So this is a whole other experience because I'm not so keen on noise. <laughs> so uh, I, like, um, I like a balance between w- w- where... Like, I like, if, if things are noisy, then it has to be an environment for me to be, I don't know, I like to be in, I, um, how can I say, it? I like peace and quiet, or I like my own space at times, and um, because I was in student halls, obviously everyone was running around like crazy, That um, so when I was, when I arrived at student halls, I was 19, and um, obviously everyone was drinking and all that, like, that's fine, like, um, people were going out, we were going out and stuff, having fun, and, uh, but... That's when the, a new challenge came for me because that's when, uh, once again, making sure distractions wasn't a thing and um, being being smart with what I did with um, my decision making. So um, sometimes I would go out, sometimes I wouldn't. And then when, when it came to um, getting the work done, I always prioritized my work first. So work was always number one. And, uh, but well, I wouldn't say work was always number one. I would say the dream was always number one. So I always thought, 
I've always um, thought in a mindset of what do I want in life and there's so many things that I wanted to achieve and I wanted to make sure I achieved them early on so that the rest of my life was just relaxing and um, fun and I've now got that <laughs> so I'm in a 23 now and it's finally um, that literally nine years of working my ass off has paid off and um, everyone always used to worry about me um, so when I was studying uh, in uh, everywhere I studied, the lecturers and uh, my classmates were always cautious to, like, why was I working so hard? And um, I always knew I was okay. Like, I was always, not okay, I, was, I knew I was always safe. I was always right. I was always healthy. Well, I wouldn't say always healthy, but, or always right, but obviously I had my challenges and stuff. But I always knew that nothing was going to get in my way. And learning to develop that mindset, it's not the easiest it, it, some some people it's really difficult because I don't know what upbringing if you're like you're training I don't know what your upbringing's like, and uh, I understand it's it's not an easy road and that's why um, I believe in giving yourself a little boost every every day like trying to find the small things and raising yourself up like trying to find the positive aspects of these things and um, like for example there's um, we all have them like there's uh, doubters that a lot of people who who don't believe in you or uh, put you down or be like, oh, this guy's this guy's crazy. Like, um, I've always been one of those people. Like, I'm gonna be this and I'm gonna get it. And people would be like, like what? Like, like really? Like, not that can't be happening. That's not gonna happen. And I was like, I don't care what you think. I've never cared what people thought. I, just, I too many people care what people think, and that's a problem. Well, it's not a problem, but it's, we have to start acknowledging um, a balance between. So you have to kind of like weigh everything up so what makes you happy it's the most literally it's the most obvious thing in the world but so many people think uh over uh overthink it or they try and hide 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 things from their passion or they're like like for example um i love to um i love to dance i don't care like so i'll tell everyone i love to dance and uh, there's nothing wrong with that like so if i'm just dancing in my, uh, dancing in my room I, i'm just going to dance and then I am. Um, I love to cook. and um, I love to make foods. Um, and my main passion is like sport and art. So I love art. And I love sport. So that's what I'm gonna do. If I'm, um, I love going outside. So I'm, what I'm gonna do? I'm going to out, go outside. I'm not gonna have to let someone else dictate what I do. And obviously, once you finish um, secondary school, you then have that power to do what you want to do. As long as you obviously make sure you have an income, you be patient. Like patience. Oh my gosh. Patience is the best thing to ever learn. If you can, obviously you have to work hard and keep pursuing, like you have to pursue, um, I wouldn't say the grind's the right, the, right, the right word, even though everything doesn't naturally kind of end up to be a grind if you want to get things quickly or um, a lot quicker than uh, um, what maybe what you, than you expected. But patience is a thing that I learned really on because uh, I was surrounded by um, a lot of people who were impatient <laughs> And I didn't like the idea of excuses. So I, I hate people complain. I, I wouldn't, well, hate's a strong word. But the, when people complain or they um, say, oh, I had this, this and that, or this was difficult, then like, I understand that everyone, like, nothing's ever easy. Like, some, like I'm, I, was, I was blessed from day one just be bored by being born in a place uh, that's not, like I'm, I was born in a family that I like my, my dad obviously worked his, his his butt off to bring my family up and stuff and um like i didn't have like it, it wasn't an easy upbringing but i'm not it's not like i'm living in poverty um so i knew that i couldn't have any, there's no excuses there's no excuses for me not to work hard and to make the most of the advantage uh, the advantages that i had just by being born uh, in a country that's uh, more privileged and that's the thing that that's when the reality clicks in so if you're listening right now and um you're really trying to um, assess where you're at. Try and really think, in, um, like I don't believe in comparing yourself to people, but I believe in uh, comparing yourself to the truth and accepting when, like the truth about things. So um, do you have enough money to get where you want to go? If you don't, then you just be truthful and go, right, I don't have the money. And then you ask yourself the next question, how do I get the money? How do I do what I need to get where I need to go? And you st slowly, step by step, go through those process. And it's not, too many people think long-term, like too, too many people are, so the, the one thing I say about long-term, which is great, is that you have to think about 
um, you have to have you have to have a career ambition. So, um, one of my favorite content creators is a guy a guy called Courage JD. So Courage, um, um, he used to be, uh, so he's a um a caster for Fortnite and he's a Twitch streamer, and he's the most positive, fun, energetic guy. He's constantly just geeking out, being himself, and that's um like that's a mindset like that's so important and he he had a goal of he wanted to be a streamer so he was so well known for being a caster but he was like in in his head he was like oh, i want to be a streamer and then um uh, for example in my one of my idols um or both my idols um or two of my idols michael jordan and kobe Bryant. uh so two of uh, the greatest i personally think they're one and two of the best players of all time uh anyone who's tuning in and he disagrees then that's okay that's not a problem at all but um kobe Bryant. Um, and Michael Jordan are the hardest working people I've ever heard of so everyone knows of Michael Jordan um, and if you don't know of Kobe Bryant Kobe Bryant literally imitated everything Michael Jordan did to be the next Michael Jordan because um, he had his dream of being the best of all time Kobe Bryant and uh, Michael Jordan was obsessed with uh, he doesn't like to lose with anything like he will literally uh, he was on um, uh, what was the TV show Ooh, who was it jimmy kimmel is it kimmel kimmel or something like that and um basically will smith was talking to uh kimmel about um going out with a, a meal with michael jordan and michael jordan um wouldn't pay <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't pay the bill because he he in his mind felt that will smith was less than him because of how competitive he was even though he loved will smith but um the he just was so competitive and he knew what he wanted in life obviously that's not a great analogy to go off with. I, I, I believe in respecting people and when it comes to food but you know what i mean it's like some you need to know exactly what you want um and acknowledge that it's going to be a process like you might be going up and down side to side everything might be changing all like your world world will be changing all the time you don't know like you might find a new passion like um whether it's rock climbing i don't know ab sailing uh dancing break dancing um making statues out of clay whatever it is but you have to understand that it's going to be that journey and to go back to my point uh early on about um the step by step so the reason why i brought all this and said all that was that a lot of people think too far ahead or they think about the um the long game all the time and the best thing i've ever learned was do things day at a time so i don't think about what um, what's going to be happening next week because it's out of my control obviously um I, I could say right i can do this monday to friday so i can say on twitter right i'm streaming next week 9 a.m to 1 p.m so that's my usual stream time so 9 a.m uk time to 1 p.m however some things might come into play as uh, as things are going on um so i like to do things day at a time so i'm like i'm definitely getting this done and i get it done and then there's no excuses like I'm not thinking about what's what's happening tomorrow. I'm thinking about what's happening today because it's today that makes the difference. And through that work, like so, I like to keep things on a sticky note. So one sticky note. So you have, we don't have a thousand notes. We have one sticky note. So if you stick one sticky note, then put everything that you want to get done on that list. So what say, say you you put three bullet points. If you can achieve those three bullet points every day, then you're already ahead of everyone else because everyone. Ev so many students have this habit of uh, writing down, oh, I want to do this, this and that, and they never get done because they have too much things going on and they lose sight of the obvious thing, which is the step by step and being patient. And I've done that all the time. I've uh, Obviously, you have to uh, raise the game at times. You have to then pick things up. Um, but I also don't believe in crunch. Crunch is a term that I've never uh, understood. Um, even though I'll, I'll admit I'm a culprit of... Um, uh, poor work working habits in the sense that I worked all the time. So um, uh, one of the stories I said in one of the previous podcasts was uh, so I um, I used to go to bed about say twelve or one o'clock and then uh, at night and then I'd be getting up at five thirty in the morning and uh, that was my times for my third and fourth year in university. Don't do that, please don't do that. Um, I literally went from uh, I think I think I said in previous podcasts I went from like thirteen stone plus to nine stone seven or something some, something crazy and don't do that whatever you do, and uh, basically what I my mindset at the time was all I did was work, and um, but, but 
like I don't regret anything. So I'm one of those people that don't like I don't regret any decisions that I made. Like I I move on, I grow, and I step, I go forward. Um, but I I think it's important to bring these things up to acknowledge what's the right way to do things. Obviously, there's no particular um correct way to do anything. But well, that's I guess that's not hundred percent true. Like certain forms of certain shapes, every, you know what I mean. But you have to acknowledge the fact that day by day is way more better than thinking week by week. Personally, like that's my that's my th- my thought process. Because if you're um, like one of the biggest culprits, um, or one of the main reasons why a lot of artists maybe lose passion is because of stress, and particularly students get stressed out so much because of deadlines. But it's mainly because of deadlines. The reason why they're stressed the deadline is it's just pure planning. It's simple as that. So if you're a student and you're tuning in right now, obviously it's called the Student Art Podcast, so I hope you're a student. But, um, or wherever you are, you don't have to be a student. Um, acknowledge and accept uh, that you need to put in the work, but you also have to think smart. So know when to chill with your friends, know when to play Xbox, play your League of Legends, play your VR games, uh, go out drinking whatever you enjoy, whatever you like to do, going out hiking, um, I don't know, <laughs> rolling around in the sand. I don't know what you guys like to do, but anything. Uh, as long as you have that break part, get the balance right. Um, plan, get things done early. If you can get things done early, then you've got the rest of the day to yourself. Um, a lot of like um, a lot of the best artists I know um, that I've ever lived um, were always working hard. However, the biggest thing I've learned from my mistakes from working hard is that it took away the pleasure so you have to get the right the right balance between um working hard but make sure that while you're working hard you're enjoying what you're doing so right now i'm doing game of thrones i'm making brand the broken i'm sculpting zbrush i'm just like oh yeah here we go game of thrones hype and i'm listening to the music i'm listening to disney in the background like i'm feel i feel alive when i'm making my artwork i'm just being me and that's what i learned when i finished uni so i had my biggest reality check when so after edinburgh so after edinburgh i went to dundee and uh so i lived in two places in dundee uh, so in my third year i was in one place and my fourth year I was in another place and after that um so i was just exhausted and uh um, i had my graduation i was so happy that i graduated um but i was knackered and i needed a, I, needed, <laughs> I needed that break because i remember so i was working in um uh, so I did. Uh, I I got the chance to work with Disney in my fourth year, um, for my honors project, and the amount of all nighters <laughs> that I did, it was it wasn't good. I remember uh, there was one day that me and my friend Eddie. So um, my my friend Eddie, he's coming on the podcast soon. He works at Rockstar, and uh, we were working with Disney at the time, and we had to have a dead. We had a deadline for the Saturday. Uh, which was a weird day to have a deadline, particularly for a, a company. But anyway, so we had a deadline for the Saturday, and me and Eddie did back to back all nighters working together um, in Substance Painter. We were doing the texturing stage of a, pro- a project that we were working on, and the amount of coffees that I went through, gee whiz, that was a that was a madness. That was, and uh, so so was he. He was. I don't even know how he survived. He he had the cold. He he had the, he was already sick. So he he was doing back to back all nighters while being sick. Like I, his body must have been destroyed. But that next night, I then, that next day, I slept 18 hours, well, 17 and a half to be precise, um, 17 and a half hours, that was the longest I've ever slept, but that was, like, that gave, right after I finished that submission, I then said to myself, I'm not doing that ever again, uh, I don't care if, if crunch ever happens for a career job, and I get told that I need to do it healthy, I believe in, you should be um, working healthy, treated healthy at work wherever it is you are and crunch shouldn't be a thing like crunch is overrated uh or i don't even think it's a thing that people naturally obviously want but a lot of people believe um there's a lot of artists that i've seen over the time be like oh yeah i've worked this many hours like uh like even i used to be um uh have a bit of a not like ego but i used to be like oh yeah in my like in my mind i'd be like oh yeah i just did a i don't know 16 hour straight grind uh, and i had maybe one bar like a bar of chocolate and a drink of coffee or something and it's not it's not the right way to do it and so the reality check that i got like i said going back to the point when i finish when i when i finish uni uh, i started enjoying life more and uh, as cliche and obvious as that sounds um but i stopped thinking about 
um just i guess oh like i had like all these ambitions and all these things i wanted to achieve and i i just kind of instantly took them off my shoulders and just started being patient and uh i've, I've always been pretty patient i've always been patient but um i've also been very uh direct like i've always known what i wanted but i learned to kind of just step back and think about things just as a step at a time and so if you're studying in uni right now have fun enjoy the moment uh be smart um be patient and uh you'll do great and um like there's a few other things that i want to talk about let's just see um uh what was the main things um so like sleep schedule um getting yourself a good sleep schedule and getting a good routine um eight hours of sleep um i used to go a four hours of sleep don't do that and uh i then went to six hours so uh, the reason why i went to six hours at the time was uh one of my idols is arnold schwarzenegger and um growing up uh watching arnold, Schwar- arnold schwarzenegger and uh learning how hard how he worked so he woke up every day at six o'clock went to bed every night at 12 o'clock no joke for years same routine uh same for Kobe Bryant. Well, Kobe Bryant was insane. Kobe Bryant went to bed uh, pretty much every day at 12, woke up at 4.30, uh, was already in the gym at quarter to five, and you're like, damn, <laughs> that guy was on a roll. Uh, that's why I have so much respect for him. But um, yeah, so I did, the six-hour thing became came from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, I was always, always, always making sure to surround myself by good, or I always think that I was surrounded by good ideals. So if I didn't have the, the, the motivation coming from friends or family, um, which I did. I was, I was lucky. Um, I have the best dad of all time. Um, um, I was spoilt for choice <laughs> instantly since the day I was born. Getting taught everything by my dad. Um, I'm really fortunate. And um, but sleeping schedule is uh, it's an important one because I I always think you should have your eight hours. And um, even if you're sleeping longer, like the the greatest tennis player of all time sleeps twelve hours a day, and that is. Uh, Fedra, so obviously there's a lot of debate like people can say like nadal but Fedra has won the most championships and he sleeps 12 hours every day and he's the greatest like he's the best and uh no one beats him <laughs> he just won wimbledon he's he, uh no he didn't no he didn't win sorry that's false information Djokovic won w- wimbledon this year but uh he uh nadal got beat by Fedra and um but yeah Fedra sleeps 12 hours a day and acknowledging when it's right to sleep uh, getting the right balance overall it's so important and this is this so this is another one so i i know i've just briefly kind of said it but surrounding yourself by the right people on a daily basis is so important so when i was in um so all the places i've I studied in there's so many different groups obviously you have uh i don't know there's there's different groups put it that way and Instantly, every time that I was um, at a place, I made sure that I was surrounded by the person who was the most passionate. So my best um, friend in Aberdeen was a guy called Garrel. And Garrel, he was a, he's a legend, absolutely amazing guy. I, I, I need to go catch up with him. But Garrel, um, he was so passion, uh, passionate about 3D um, as much as me. And uh, we would be like walking down the street and... Uh, oh gosh that's walking down the street song just came to my mind but um so we'd be like walking down the street and be like yo it's poly- polygons uh, is i don't know that pole pole over there that light post is let's say 40 polygons so we were just geeking out about 3d all the time and geeking out about art and games and silhouettes and design and creativity and films and movies like spielberg like i love spielberg and um uh, i always made sure to surround myself by the right people and uh, when I was in um, uh, Dundee, same thing again. Uh, I made sure to surround myself by the people who were better than me. So artists who were better than me, and once again had more passion. And uh, so the most inta- the most talented person uh, I know is a guy called Yannick Cowan. Um, I really hope one day he'll come on the podcast. But I he, I don't know. Hopefully one day. But um, that guy was just a magician. He still is. He works for a company called Axis Animation. He's the most talented guy I know. And I've I've talked to a lot of people. <laughs> and uh, I've never seen someone as gifted. Uh, well, I don't believe in gifted. He, he's worked his butt off. Um, he's worked really hard. And uh, learning so much from him and become, becoming friends with him and talking to him and keeping in touch. And uh, 
just most importantly just being good friends and um i've always made sure that if there's someone who's making excuses or um who who's just like, like i said i don't like when people make excuses or so i instantly just get them out of my life simple as that if someone's going to complain or moan or whine on a daily basis then it's just going to it's just going to frustrate me more and uh I'm a very positive person, so I like to keep things always energy going. So if you if you've not tuned into my uh, into my uh, the Ross Baxter show, by the way, if you're new uh, to my Twitch, like I said earlier, uh, Ross Twitch TV forward slash Ross Baxter. I'm I'm learning the ropes. I'm I'm learning how to learn. I'm learning how to learn. I'll screw up. Why why not? We'll we'll say that. That's today's main quote. I'm learning how to learn. Well, technically, that's what we're doing on a daily basis. So technically, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. But um, yeah, so I do that. And um, I've met some great friends on that. And once again, I'm, I'm surrounding myself by the right people. And uh, for example, doing the podcast, I'm talking to all these different people, learning from different uh, people all the time and making sure I'm constantly in an environment of art and uh, in, around people all the time that are constantly making me feel better. Um, obviously, you have to get right, surrounded yourself by people as well who tell you the truth. Like, the truth is always the most important. Uh, but also telling the truth, so giving feedback in the right way. A lot of people have to make sure that they're giving feedback in a positive way and making sure that uh, the person's actually learning from it instead of just putting them down because that that, that just doesn't help anyone. And um, most importantly, don't give up. Giving up is the it's the easy way out. Don't. Why would you want to live your life thinking about what if? Like there's nothing that this so this is a phrase that I go by and it's what if, and so far I don't have any part of the what if and the reason why is because I don't want to have anything saying what if I did this, I live life with no regrets. I make sure everything is um, um obviously things happen uh, that you can't control and that's just part of life, but if there's something in your um in your gut like I I I trust the gut feeling, for example um. Like the obvious one, like um, like his relationships and stuff. So um, if for example, uh, falling in love for someone, or I don't know, if you're really interested in, in a girl or a boy or whatever, and you're trying to get the courage, um, to like for example, like boy asking a girl, trying to get that courage to ask her out. Like I know, um, early on, like the first time you ask, you've asked someone out, it's not the easiest of things. It's you're gonna be nervous. That's okay. You're human. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that, and. But taking that step to then go and have the courage to go ask her out, that's you just made a massive leap. As as some as a, a small thing it may sound, it's a big step because it's a it's a confidence boost. It's that next step in your life. It's that next that's the next journey. And um, believing in yourself is such a important thing. So, um, and it, it rubs off on people. It's it's a good thing to have like good energy, good vibes. So when I'm doing the stream. Um, I like to sing, so I'm just gonna sing. I don't care if someone's not going to uh, like. My singing might not be the greatest, but I have fun. So why not? Why not sing? Like karaoke, like damn, karaoke is great. Like uh, get everyone t- together, have a good sing song. You're sorted for the day. Like I was geeking out about High School Musical with a, fr- uh, a friend I've made out uh, made uh, on Twitch, and uh, she 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 says that she's going to be singing soon on stream. So I hold it to her. So she better start singing. Uh, no pressure. You you know who you are, Liv. <laughs> but um, it's all about you ha- yeah. You just have to find the belief. Like, learn how to be positive, and bring yourself up. And this this then connects all the dots that I've talked about today. So good good food. So eat good food. Eating eating correct. That sounds better. Um, exercise. So I do sport every day. I go to the gym literally every day. Um, I I used to swim along and run alongside all that as well. And all that has helped my art get better because I'm in the right mindset, um, and you ha- you have to be in the right mindset to get, get put yourself in the right direction. So trust in that and keep working. And like I said, I've got my dream job. If I can get my dream job uh, through um, uh, all the things I've said, you can you can too. So it's been two years since I finished uni. Um, I made sure to work smart, listen, trust in time, be patient listen to the people who are better than me there's so many people out there don't have an ego acknowledge the fact that it's a process and you'll do great and um i hope today is this video has been something different for you guys and i hope you've enjoyed it and um, i also I, I do apologize by the way if there's not been so many podcasts uh, the reason why is because i'm moving house 
and um, flat hunting was an was an adventure. Put it that way. <laughs> there was a, a lot of a. Uh, it, it was an interesting journey. Put it that way. And um, however, um, if you do want to see content uh, by me, because I am creating content still every day, so I do um, my Twitch stream every single day. So make sure to go follow me there at Ross Baxter Art. And if you have any questions, literally, remember, I'm 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 here. The reason why I do this is to help you guys out. So if you feel um, that you, you have a question that you need answered, send me a message, uh, whether it's in the comments below and uh, whether it's um, through LinkedIn, say if it's something that's a bit more, um, I guess, deeper that you maybe want to, um, I, can, I, can, I can do my best. I'm not, um, I'm always happy to help. Obviously, if I don't get back to you straight away, it's, it's, not because, <laughs> it's not because I don't want to get back to you, it's just because I'm busy. And um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. This is episode 44 of the Shunar Podcast. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe. We're closing on 2,000 subscribers. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And and with all that said, bye for now. And keep working hard and have fun. Bye for now.